Saturday of the twentieth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Ruth. Naomi had a prominent kinsman named Boaz of the clan of her husband Elimelech. Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, "Let me go and glean ears of grain in the field of any one who will allow me that favor." Naomi said to her, "Go, my daughter," and she went. The field she entered to glean after the harvesters happened to be the section belonging to Boaz of the clan of Elimelech. Boaz said to Ruth, "Listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in any one else's field. You are not to leave here. Stay here with my women servants. Watch to see which field is to be harvested and follow them. I have commanded the young men to do you no harm." When you are thirsty, you may go and drink from the vessels the young men have filled. Casting herself prostrate upon the ground, Ruth said to him, "Why should I, a foreigner, be favored with your notice?" Boaz answered her, "I have had a complete account of what you have done for your mother-in-law after your husband's death. You have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth." And have come to a people whom you did not know previously. Boaz took Ruth. When they came together as man and wife, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, "Blessed is the Lord who has not failed to provide you today with an heir. May he become famous in Israel. He will be your comfort and the support of your old age." For his mother is the daughter-in-law who loves you; she is worth more to you than seven sons. Naomi took the child, placed him on her lap, and became his nurse. And the neighbor women gave him his name at the news that a grandson had been born to Naomi. They called him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The response is, "See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table." See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, "The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry." And lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you. Do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself. Will be exalted. The gospel of the Lord. 
Saturday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, 8 to 11, and chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. Ruth and Naomi have moved back to Bethlehem, which is Naomi's hometown. And when she's there, she has to earn a living for the family. Well, Ruth offers to go off gleaning in the fields. Gleaning is an occupation that was very often undertaken by widows and orphans. It was a sort of social assistance that when the harvesters went through the field, they weren't to take all the grain. If some spilled, if some were missed, they leave that for the people who came later to glean it. Ruth is going to do this, but that's a bit dangerous because she's a foreigner and she might be abused. So Naomi tells her to go to the fields of Boaz, who's one of their relatives. Now part of that is that Boaz being a relative will certainly protect Ruth. Part of that might be that Naomi has something in mind, that she wants Boaz to meet Ruth and maybe fall in love with her. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. Boaz says, only come to my fields. He's a rather rich man. And don't worry if you're thirsty, just ask the young men. They'll give you something to drink. That is already a symbolic gesture. In the Old Testament, usually it's women who offer men water at the well. And that's a sign that they're to be the wives of these men. We hear that with Moses. We hear it with Isaac. And in the New Testament, we're going to hear it with the Samaritan woman at the well. The Samaritans being represented by this woman who will marry God, become part of the new covenant. In this case, it's the man offering water to the woman because Ruth is a foreigner. It's not her water to give. She's being invited into a marriage. And in fact, she marries Boaz and has a son who's named Obed. Obed is the father of Jesse, who becomes the father of David, the king of Israel. And so again, this is part, part of the legend, part of the history of the family of David. It's very odd that in that history, a woman like Ruth would be included. In fact, it's so odd that in the Gospel of Matthew, when Matthew tells the genealogy, he mentions four unusual women in the Old Testament. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. Now, besides Ruth, those other three women are somewhat disreputable, and yet they're invited to become matriarchs of Israel. Ruth is considered disreputable only because she's a Moabite, a foreigner, and they were hated by the Jews. Nevertheless, she is invited to become a matriarch of Israel. And so, in a sense, this is a political apologia to explain away the fact that David has a skeleton in the closet. And the response of this book, yes, but this, this skeleton is very honorable. The Gospel is from Matthew 23, 1-12. Jesus says that the scribes and the Pharisees have the chair of Moses. They were the ones who were to interpret the law. And Jesus says this is a job given to them by God. It's a good thing, but they misuse it. They only seek honor. They widen their phylacteries. Phylacteries are those little boxes that observant Jewish men tied to their forehead and to their wrists. It contains a little bit of the law of Israel. They make them as big as possible so everybody can see how religious they are. They lengthen their tassels. Observant Jewish men have four tassels that lead from the underwear that hang out. It was a sign that they're different from everybody else. Well, they lengthen it just to be seen, just to be considered more religious. They like titles like rabbi, like father, like master. They seek honor and they do not seek to serve. Now, one of the difficult things in this passage is don't call anyone on earth your father. We have to realize that Matthew is a very Jewish gospel, and it, this is a very Jewish way of saying things. The next time we receive a census form and it asks for the name of our Father, it's not likely that we're going to put God in heaven as the name of our Father. Rather, we realize that sometimes we use the title Father for people here on earth, and that the saying no one should be our Father is simply saying no one should be the center of your belief, God should be the center. Well, unfortunately, in the Catholic Church, we apply the name Father to our priests. And Protestants will sometimes get on our back because of that. Again, we have to realize that that title probably shouldn't have been chosen. It was chosen because many of the monks were considered to be spiritual fathers to their disciples. And they received that title, and it just passed on to include all priests, all presbyters. 
It probably would have been better if it had not been chosen, but it was. And it's really not a violation of this commandment. As long as the priest doesn't become the center of people's faith, God should always be the center. Like John the Baptist, all priests should be pointing to Jesus and saying, follow him, not me. And may God bless us.